Tarot and Kabbalah, the path of initiation in the sacred arcana. Samuel Owen Baor. And the Lord God caused to sprout from the ground every tree pleasant to see and good to eat, and the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2. Nine. Introduction. <clears throat> of his more than 60 books, it is in this one that Samuel On Waor outlines the scientific foundations upon which all the world's religions depend. Although he exhaustively revealed the correspondences between religions throughout his other writings, it is here that we discover the actual blueprints from which all religions were constructed. The supreme profundity of this information and its corresponding uh, difficulty may be why it was one of the last books that he wrote being finished uh, posthumously by his wife. To reach understanding of uh, this profound book requires intensive study and meditation. The reader should be prepared to comprehend that much of the knowledge presented herein is contrary to the popular or official teachings of many religions, traditions, and schools. We should have the courage and sincerity to ask ourselves, with the knowledge I have learned so far, have I achieved profound realization of my inner self? Am I transcending my own karma and suffering? We should be brave enough to recognize that if we have not achieved these con uh, conscious experiences, then we must revolutionize our concepts, ideas, attachments, and practices. We must seek to remove what holds us back, and the gravest limitations we are bound by are precisely within our own minds and hearts. Thus, the study of this book, as well as any scripture, requires a continual revision of the concepts we have formed and inherited from others. Throughout the process of his development, Samuel Onwaor eagerly sought to clarify and revise his own understanding of the science of awakening the consciousness. Thus you find he uh, connected the mistakes he made in earlier writings. So we must also perpetually question and revise our own understanding and practice. Samael also corrects many mistakes and oversights made by Kabbalists and occultists. Many such cor uh, corrections are made in this book, but not explained. <clears throat> Primarily, it will be noted that <clears throat> many of the cards in the popular tarot are improperly illustrated, interpreted, and numbered. This book provides a complete reference to the tarot as it used and displayed by positively awakened beings in the internal worlds. For example, the tarot is a set of cards arranged into two groups, the 22 major arcana and the 56 minor arcana. However, very few contemporary tarot decks accurately reflect the true nature of these cards, especially in the minor arcana. These cards should be numbered and named in the same manner as the major arcana. For example, the 24th minor arcanum is the weaver. So the author of this book will refer to these minor arcana not as cups, but wands, and so on. Not as it is commonly practiced, but by their true name and number. There is a complete reference to the minor arcana in the appendices of this book. It is suggested that students who wish to consult the Torah using the method given by Samael on Baor do so with the proper Torah deck that contains the correct numbers and arrangement. 
else the answer is given cannot be assured. Interested persons may seek to purchase a Gnostic deck or may, with some effort, make their own deck based on the information provided in this, this text. Students who seek to comprehend the full depth of the Torah and the Kabbalah must seek such understanding in the meditation. Moreover, students who seek to comprehend the full depth of this book must also seek such understanding in meditation. <clears throat> Make no mistake, the true heart of this knowledge cannot be read from a page. It is found between the lines, in the white space, the emptiness, that can only be penetrated by the consciousness. Until we revolutionize our own minds and hearts and develop the capacity to retrieve such knowledge of, for ourselves, internally, directly, we will be as a leaf tossed about by the wind. As we read in this book, the intellectual loses the sense of a sentence only for the lack of a period or comma. The intuitive one knows how to read where the master did not write and to listen when the master is not speaking. May all beings be happy. May all beings be joyful. May all beings be in peace. Prologue. The Kabbalah is lost within the night of time, within the womb of Maha Kundalini, the great mother, where the universe was engendered. The Kabbalah is the science of numbers. The author of the Toro was the angel Metatron. He is Lord of the Serpent Wisdom. The Bible refers to him as the prophet Enoch, or Enoch as we call him. The angel Metatron, or Enoch, entered the Torah in which the entirety of divine wisdom is enclosed. The Torah remains written in stone. He also left us the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This great master lives in the superior worlds, in the world of Atsilut, which is a world of indescribable happiness. According to the Kabbalah, this world is the region of Keter, a very high Sephra. All Kabbalists base themselves on the Toro, and it is necessary for them to comprehend the Taro and study it deeply. The universe was made with the law of numbers, measurements, and weight. Mathematics forms the universe and the numbers become living entities. One who penetrates chesed, the pure and ineffable world of the spirit, can verify that in this region everything is reduced to numbers. This region is incredibly real. In this cycle, uh, sorry, not psychological. In this physical world, we do not see things as they are. We see merely the images of things. The images of things merely. But when in Chesed, we can know the amount of atoms that form a table and the amount of karma owed by a planet or the planet, as well as the amount of mole uh, molecules that function in each body. Chesed is a world of mathematics. It is a realistic world. In Chesed, one may believe that one is separated from the reality of the world. Yet, one is actually in the reality. Uh, in a temple of Chesed, one can know the quantity of people who are self-realized and the quantity of those who are not. If one enters a kitchen, one knows the amount of atoms that are in the food that one is going to eat. This is an incredibly realistic world. In the world of Chesed, one knows who is truly a human being. <clears throat> one night, when I was in the world of Chesed, I entered into a theater where the Lords of Karma were shown passing by on the moving screen, which is actually the screen of creation. They were balancing the karmas of the two strongest nations of the world upon a great scale. Each nation's karma was placed on either side of the scale. 
the scale inclined towards the Colossus, uh, Colossus, Colossus of the North, the Colossus of the North. This Colossus holds a great deal of karma. Its strength is weakening, and it will eventually fall, fulminated. <clears throat> Unquestionably, any karma that is owed must be paid. The, theos the theosophists speak of planes and subplanes. These are the ten sferot, the ten emanations of the eternal mother space, the ten surges that serve as a foundation of the great mother. The seven planets of the solar system are the seven sferot, and the thrice spiritual sun is the sferotic crown. These sephirot live and palpitate within our consciousness, and we must learn to manipulate and combine them in the marvelous laboratory of our interior universe. Thanks to this sephirot, one can transform oneself into a human being. There are feminine sephirot as well as masculine, just as we find positive ions and negative ions. Our inner being needs to realize of these ten sferot because uh, of, needs the realization of these ten sferot because they are within us here and now. When these ten realized sferot that resemble precious gems are entrusted, or rather encrusted into an individual, they convert the person into a self-realized human being. This is something marvelous. The Sferotic crown is formed by Keter, Chokmah, and Bina, the Holy Trinity, the Logos. One has to comprehend the nation, so sorry, foundation of these three Sferot. In Christianity, we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Gnosis, we have first Logos, second Logos, third Logos, the three Logoi in plural. In Hebrew, we have Keter, Chokmah, Bina. And these attributes, for all of them, it begins wisdom, love, and power, or the igneous principle, sex the uh, union between uh, polarities through the force of sex and creation. Keter is the elder of the days, the hidden of the hidden, hidden, the good of the good. He has 31 curls in his hair and 13 ringlets in his beard. 13 symbolizes the verb, the word. Marvelous things have been spoken about him. One can have a meeting with him through samadhi, ecstasy, in order to receive his commands. He is infinitely merciful. He is absolute wisdom. Chokmah is the Christ, love. The Christ awaits the disciple that will work in the ninth sphere and he prepares him with infinite love. The instructor of the world is love. Bina is the Holy Spirit, the igneous power. The following is, a, is an example of Bina. A hierophant was approached by a mentally ill woman who wished to be healed. The hierophant succeeded in curing her and asked the woman, uh, the woman's relatives for payment for his service. Subsequently, he had a meeting with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit took the form of a white dove. The hierophant inquired if he was uh, treading well on the path, and the Holy Spirit told him that he was not. I am the one who heals, said the Holy Spirit. Because of this experience, the Hierophant decided to return the money. If one has the power to cure and collect payment, the individual commits a very grave crime. 
Kabbalah is often spoken of in the internal worlds. One has to know how to add Kabbalistic numbers. If we ask a uh, master, how long are we going to live? He will answer in numbers. The objective of studying the Kabbalah is to be skilled for work in the internal worlds. For example, on one occasion, an initiate asked for the power of clairvoyance. Internally, he received the answer, quote, it will be in eight days, end quote. One that does not understand will return to the physical body, believing that within eight days, he or she will be clairvoyant. For example, if the day is Wednesday, the person will believe he will be a clairvoyant by the following Wednesday. In reality, eight is the number of Job. Thus, the answer was indicating that the initiate must have patience. One that does not comprehend remains confused in the internal worlds. Kabbalah is the basis in order to uh, understand the language of these worlds. It is obvious that the Kabbalistic studies must be confined, sorry, combined with work on oneself. One must be conscious of these studies, for if they remain only in the intellect, they will be lost when one dies. Yet, if one is conscious of them, the knowledge will manifest itself from childhood. On a certain occasion, an initiate wanted to know how he was progressing in his esoteric studies. His guru answered uh, him Kabbalistically, saying, You need 58 minutes in order to complete the work, and you must bring 36 bolivars, each of one of them of 32 kilograms, and the initiations must be qualified. If we break this down, we look at the minutes. He said 58 minutes. <clears throat> so we have to do some numerology here. You simply add the numbers and create a single digit or a master number. So 5 plus 8 equals 13, which uh, apparently in this context means death. I would imagine that 9 means that, but it doesn't in this case. Uh, Bolivars, 36, 3 plus 6 equals 9, the ninth sphere. Kilograms, 3 plus 2 equals 5. The pentalpha, the pentagram. Often symbol, 5 often symbolizes change. If an initiate needs 58 minutes, it means he has not even an hour in order to liberate himself. 5 plus 8 equals 13, which is a master, double digit number is, is a master number. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't sum this down into, why you don't sum this down into a single digit, because 1 plus 3 is 4. If minutes are spoken of, it is because he has little time. This 36 boulevards, San Martins, Tines, or Morelos, currency of South America, are the liberators. 3, 6 equals 9. I mean, 3 plus 6. The ninth sphere. Sex, the work with the spear. These are the 36 basic fundamental works. The 32 kilograms are the uh, 32 paths, the pentalpha. Fifty-eight plus 36 plus 32 equals 126. So if we add all of these numbers, these different variables up together, we get 126. If we add 1 plus 2 plus 6, that equals 9, which is also which also means completion or perfection. 9 symbolizes the ending of cycles and the closing of karma. 
Uh, all of the work is in the ninth sphere. This is the Kabbalistic language that is used in the White Lodge. Do not forget that the additions themselves are Kabbalistic additions. One must be completely practical. When the meaning of the 22 arcana are known, then the practical part of predictions must be studied. This is in order to utilize the knowledge in, uh, intelligently in cases of very important matters. The 22 arcana must be memorized. In order to be a complete uh, Kabbalist, one has to study. One has to record the teachings in the memory. Inverential peace. Samuel Owen Baor. The word arcanum has a Latin root, I mean origin. Plural form is arcana. Arcanum is a secret, a mystery known only to the specifically, or rather the specially educated. First part, description and study of the esoteric tarot. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of a mystery, even the occult wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 9. Arcanum 1, the magician. Description of the plate. The eyes in the superior part of the card represent the eyes of the Father. Internally, they represent the infinite, the holy eight, the caduceus of Mercury, the eight kabirs that direct the planet. The magician is in profile, showing his right side, meaning that the entire right side represents the manifested one. The serpent is situated uh, upon his forehead, indicating that he has risen and that he is a self-realized master. The left hand of the magician holds the staff of power. This symbolizes the spinal medulla that points toward the infinite. His right hand points toward the earth, indicating that he dominates it with uh, science and that one has to rise up from below. It is not possible to ascend without previously descending. One needs to descend to the ninth sphere, which has to rep two representations. The first is sex, the cubic stone of Yesod. The second is the nine circles, the atomic infernos, where the initiate must descend. The right hand symbolizes the descent in order to ascend. There is a triangle on his dress with a vortex pointing upwards, representing the three primary forces reunited in Keter, the One. By his side there stands a table which represents the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, the physical plane. Upon the table, various objects rest in disorder. The sword of power, the lingam, sexual masculine organ. A chalice representing the physical brain and also the yoni, the feminine sexual organ. And a moon that must be converted into a sun. Beneath the table is the immortal ibis, the phoenix bird the Kala Hamsa Swan, the Holy Spirit that symbolizes love. 
It is beneath the table to indicate that one has to reorganize the disordered objects upon the table by means of the sacred fire of the third logos. In the inferior part of the plate, we find the cubic stone, the chiseled philosophical stone within the waters of life, indicating the work that must be performed. It is the cubic stone of Yesod, sex, the stumbling stone, the rock of the scandal. The esoteric study of the Tarot is divided into two parts, the esoteric and the mathematic. The first has 22 arcana and is followed by the advancement of the second part through mathematics. The first arcanum is the magician, that which begins, that which starts. It is unity, the unity, the divine spirit of each person, the divine monad or immortal spark of every human being, of every creature. The number one is the mother of all unities. The number one unfolds itself into the following arcanum, the priestess. With the first arcanum, we enter into the uh, sanctum regnum of magic, the holy eight upon the head, illustrated by the two eyes. The Egyptian eyes, those two Egyptian eyes. It represents the eight kabirs and is the symbol of life and death. This sacred symbol of the infinite is found in the center of the earth, in the ninth sphere. All of the organisms rotate upon this symbol and also within the human body of anyone who wishes to self-realize. There is always an internal struggle between the brain against sex, sex against the brain, and heart against heart. If sex commands the brain, the result is the fall, and the pentagram representing the master remains with the interior, sorry, inferior points aiming upward and the superior points aiming downwards. Often uh, the popular symbol used by Satanists. The Holy Eight is a very important and interesting symbol. It encloses, defines, and joins the magnetic currents that are established between the terrestrial and the spiritual man. This sign joins or separates all of the elements which are controlled by the atomic energy if it is traced with the middle finger, index finger, and the thumb over the surface of the cardiac plexus. Practice. Place the mind in quietude and silence and go into sleep, or rather go to sleep imagining the figure of the Holy Eight, the infinite, and tracing the sign over the heart as previously mentioned. Let this fi uh, figure submerge into your consciousness. Clear your mind of all thoughts. After a certain time, you will awaken consciousness in the region known as the astral world. If we observe the spinal column, we will see the Holy Eight, the Caduceus of Mercury, or Hermes. This represents the two ganglionic cords that entwine along the spinal medulla and that are known as Ida and Pingala, the two witnesses the two olive branches, or the two candlesticks, which are before the throne of the god of the earth. They ascend towards the brain to the pineal gland, then ascend to the pituitary gland in the mid-brow, and finally reach the heart through a fine thread called the Amrita Nadi. The solar atoms rise through the right cord, and the lunar atoms rise through, through the left. Our magical powers are lit when these atoms ascend along the dorsal spine. The Holy Eight is, 
has been and will always be the key of everything. No magician can exist without the Holy Eight. If we consider the tracing of this symbol, we see that it encloses a double circuit where the two forces cross. One closes and the other opens. This is the key to open all of the doors. It opens our interior temple. It is the sign that opens the book of the seven seals. It is used for everything in the sacred order of Tibet, an order that we have the honor of representing here in Mexico. It is the most powerful order of all the Asian traditions. This order is formed by 201 members. The, mod uh, the major rank is formed by 72 Brahmas. The great regent of this order is the great Guruji uh, Bhagavan Aklaiva. Aklaiva or Aklaiva. This sacred order of the of Tibet is a, the genuine this this sacred order of Tibet is the genuine owner of the real treasury of Aryavarta. This treasury of the or rather is the Arcanum AZF. Exercise. Concentrate on the sacred order of Tibet and the Holy Eight, moments before laying down. Call upon the master Bhagavan Aklaiva. With continued practice, he will help you to depart in your astral body. A given night, you will be called to assist the Tibetan Lodge and you will be sum submitted to seven ordeals in the temples of the Himalayas. When you are called, the masters pull your astral body from your feet so that you can present yourself standing. We must be courageous because we will be submitted to many difficult ordeals. We will be decapitated and our heart will be pierced with a sword. One must be courageous. The one who has the aspiration and consistency will succeed. This sacred order of Tibet is very strict. The true uh, rulers of humanity are found here. The fire of Phlegaton and the water of Acheron or Acheron cross in the ninth sphere, sex and form the sign of the infinite. It is necessary to work with water and fire, which is the origin of beasts, human beings, and the gods. One who wishes to ascend must have previously descended. This is the ultimate ordeal of which almost everyone fails. It is tremendous. Everything in life has a price. Nothing is given as a gift. Life is the cost of the realization of the self. One must be courageous in order to be admitted into the sacred order of Tibet. Our organism is constituted just as the earth is constituted. We must work and descend into our own inferior worlds or infernal worlds. It is necessary to work with the sexual energy, which is the cubic stone of Yasod.